right, welcome to our lightning round session on Big Talk from Small Libraries 2020. I'm Krista Porter, your host here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Um, it is noon central time and we are going to start our lightning rounds. This is five 10 minute sessions, uh, some quick information from um, some libraries. First up, we have Carrie Adams. Good afternoon. It's afternoon, good afternoon, Carrie. And she's going to talk about um, uh, can a new library webpage overcome a small small library challenges? And she's from um, Baptist Health Science Libraries, which actually their population served. I think they are the biggest one we have today at just 9000 still on this, you know, smaller than what some people think is a small library. So I'll just hand it over to you, Carrie, to take it away. Thank you so much. Hi all, thanks for letting me uh, speak to you today. I'm talking today a little bit about how we, as a small library, uh, overcame some challenges using technology to support a large hospital system. Baptist Health is actually a diverse health system serving Northeast Florida. We have over a thousand patient beds. We have five hospitals, two standalone emergency centers, physician offices, health center clinics, outpatient services, we're a Magnet Award recipient three times now, which is a gold standard for nursing professional practice and a grade A from the LeapFrog Hospital Safety Group. Um, but we are um, in Jacksonville, Florida, which is the largest city by area in the contiguous United States. So our clinicians are very dispersed throughout the different uh, locations. So the physical library isn't um, their source of information, the online library is. And a lot of times it's the only source of information or the only contact they have with the library or the librarian ever. Um, so we did need to do some changes because it wasn't very usable for a lot of our clinicians. And our clinicians have a need for immediate access to evidence-based information to support patient care. Our web team, our organization web team, actually ran the library web page. So it also made it difficult to do immediate edits or quick turnarounds and changes. Mm. This is what our original web page looked like. It is very, it was very functional, but unless you're already familiar with what resource you needed or how to specifically do a search, you were really hindered. We don't have an easy way to do a general search of the resources things like that. In addition, um, we have a lot of clinicians coming out of school. We have a residents coming from med school and we're promoting our nurses to return to school to get their bachelor's, master's and doctorate degrees. So a lot of our clinicians are used to more of an academic feel to their web page with that one search box. Um, so the process we undertook was first to survey our uh, patrons, both our users and our non-users, we felt it was really important to um, survey our non-users to make sure we weren't missing something that was essential to their practice, and that's why they weren't using it. So our current users were asked how sat to rate their satisfaction, what they've had challenges with in the past with the library webpage, and the recommendations for improvement. Um, many said that they had problems accessing full text articles, which is really important for them, searching for information with ebooks and remote access from their personal devices. So those were all really important things that we needed to consider when we were deciding whether to undertake this project. They actually uh, suggested improvement. Again, that full text access was really important to them, but also better organization of the resources and easier search options. Those um, non-users we reached mostly through print surveys because they weren't coming online to use the library webpage. So we did a lot of meeting attendance to try and um, reach them. And they were asked why they didn't use the webpage. And the majority of them, almost half, said that they didn't know it existed, which is its own problem. And we're undertaking some steps to fix that right now. But others utilize other resources such as their school library and many said they just didn't have time so we really needed to streamline the process to be able to get them the information they needed and we asked them also what is most important to them in the library webpage you're moderately split across the board on the options but they did have a slight preference for again that organization and ease of searching we also undertook um, some usability testing with eight volunteers 
and we gave them specific tasks to try and locate information on the library and then asked them how they felt about it. And we ver that verified anecdotal evidence that with um, all the technical requests and service calls that we were getting and random help questions throughout the emails and processes that our super users were really adept at accessing the information they needed, but even they had some issues with some of the tasks. But our novice users found many of the tasks extremely frustrating and difficult to accomplish. We also asked for, we had a lot of open comments available on the survey process uh, to get to the depth of what the issues were. We actually had really high, pretty high user satisfaction responses, 70% that they were satisfied or extremely satisfied, but the comments told us a different story. And the comments told us that they were confounding library services with the online library. So if you notice on that left side of the diamond, you have a blue pretty large librarian and at the bottom of the diamond another blue pretty large carry and a lot of the comments were saying if I can't get it the light walk called the library if I can't get it Carrie can get it for me we really appreciate the turnaround time etc cetera, etc cetera. so they were really happy that we were able to get the information for them but they weren't able to get it themselves which was one of the big problems so how did we choose? We could redesign internally with our library web team who were fantastic, but that still wouldn't give us control over the web page. But it would be an, um, technically free, at least for, from a budgetary constraint for our department because it's an organizational cost, but it wouldn't hit our budget line. But we would not get that single search box, which we thought was really important. And it would take a long time to get this turned around because we're in the middle middle of a lot of um, technical processes of revamping some different resources for our clinicians. So we also looked at the outside vendor service. Um, that would be a budgetary cost, which was an issue, and it could hinder buy-in from the information team. Um, they don't often like to use external resources when we have them available internally, but the turnaround time would be excellent. And as we tested the different resources, we actually did get buy-in from information services, which was a shock almost, but we actually were able to go with an external vendor and based on feedback and cost and the offerings that they had, we went with the Ovid Discovery Service which was um, really well done, we thought, for our needs and um, a lower cost, which was also important. So we, after we created the page, we went, under, went through the process of spreading the word. And how did we do that? We first started by sending a link to our super users to get their feedback, to make sure we weren't missing anything that um, didn't transfer from the last page. And we also did the same thing. We presented demos to some of our more spoken clinicians um, to get their feedback. After that was done and we determined that everything seemed to be running really well and we got really good feedback, we had a soft opening where we kept both the old web page and the new web page live for about six weeks. The old web page had a big banner information linking to the new web page to try it out, letting everyone know that it would be gone in a while. Um, and we also presented the information to our organizational magazine to reach those non-users again. We had flyers printed and distributed both print and electronically with a QR code. And we hit a lot of meetings, mostly global meetings, asking leaders to distribute the information. Also our shared governance nursing meetings so they could distribute to our nurses and our different interdisciplinary meetings so we could try and reach all of our clinicians and staff that would be using the resource. So what happened? Um, we went fully live June 2019, and as you can see, the usage went up exponentially. If it stays, we'll have to see in 2020. Um, but we also had some excellent resource usage as well that went up. Our books actually went down a little bit because we realized that not all of the books made it over to the new page. Um, we had some unintended consequences. Our document delivery actually went up. We thought it would go down. We made it very easy to request articles, but we think that's helping with the frustration. It took a lot longer to make personal accounts than we expected, and we learned that relationships are important. Um, our, help, our help questions went down, which is really important, and our feedback has been excellent. And we are able to put out information very quickly. For example, we have the latest research on the coronavirus out right now. As soon as it hit the news, we were able to prepare our clinicians for any information. Um, and that's about it for me. I'm happy to take any questions. And thank you so much for your time. Yeah. 
Awesome. All right. Thank you, Carrie. Um, yes. Anybody have any questions for Carrie? We have a couple of minutes here where you can ask any questions. Uh, type them into the question section of your uh, GoToWebinar interface. Nobody asked any questions while you were talking, but that's okay. Um, I'm glad you mentioned the coronavirus there. I'm, that's something good you have there. The people, another place for people to have it. Something very timely and important. Yeah. It's interesting to. I was. It was interesting. I think to hear the misconceptions, confusion people had about your website that was already out there. It's, it's, I think, something that a lot of people, everybody struggles with, I think. We are this and you don't know what we are. How could you not know that? <laughs> We've been here yeah. for so long. <laughs> well, yes, being a solo librarian, it's difficult to reach, you know, I mean, we're not supporting, we have 9,000 staff and employees, but a lot of those aren't actually using the library services because they don't necessarily need to. But the ones that should be using it don't always know that it exists because being a single librarian, it'd be difficult to hit night shifts. You know, we're a 24-hour operation, so it can be very difficult to spread the word. So we, mm -hmm. we take what we can get and try and get it out as much as possible. Yeah. And so are do you maintain the website or um, yourself now or who is somebody else? Yes. How's that being so we, um, I have support with um, our Ovid reps that can help with assistance, but I'm able to update and edit immediately whenever something strikes my fancy. <laughs> ah, so that's much more control, much better. Yeah. Um, and then one other question, did your one after graph show the database usage declined after the new site? Is that is that correct? Yeah. What, said? what was that? all about. <laughs> it did go down slightly. We think um, our theory, it went down about 15% for the database searches, but that's not including that single search box. So we think that mm -hmm. that's really had an effect to pull people from the databases when they need that just-in-time clinical information. That's kind of what we're pushing it for mm -hmm. um, versus doing full research and full evidence-based practice. But if they have a quick clinical question, that's where that one search box comes from, comes in. And if you add in the usage of that one search box, the usage itself actually went up 14% overall. Mm -hmm. So it's there. That's yeah. what that's our theory. We'll see if it continues. Yeah. So it's a change in usage, but one that is more a positive one. You know, decline isn't always a bad thing, depending on what's happening around it. Exactly. We definitely make sure that they know that they still need to use the databases for their full literature research and evidence-based practice. But when they have those quick clinical questions like, how do I insert a venous catheter access device, or how do I do this, or what's the mm -hmm. best medication for this, that's where those um, that one search box comes in. Awesome. All right. Makes sense. Thanks for the explanation. All right. 